introduce uh, all the people to my right, starting with my Deputy Chief Ed Noonan, followed by Captain Kelly of my Criminal Investigation Division, followed by the Honor Honorable Mayor Robert Palmieri, and UK College President Laura Casamia. Um, first of all, I'd like to address in the, the issue with the parents and the students. I can't thank the students and the faculty yesterday for their patience uh, in yesterday's ordeal. Um, you know, just look at the campus offhand, you wouldn't think that uh, there are that many buildings and lots that need to be checked. And, uh, and uh, to the credit to the law enforcement and the campus security here, they checked every square inch to assure the security of the students and faculty here. Um, I also like to take the time to thank our law enforcement partners, uh, FBI, state police, uh, local law enforcement, uh, county sheriff's department, uh, they played in the Central Road um, in not only uh, limiting and uh, blocking off access to the campus, but also helped us do building uh, searches and grid searches throughout the area. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about these false threats that we're starting to see uh, ever since Parkland. And it's not just an issue that's happening here, it's happened throughout the entire country. And unfortunately, it eats up a lot of resources for law enforcement uh, and tracking these down and ultimately hold these people responsible who are making these threats. I will tell you this much, as far as the suspect that had made the, the calls and the threats yesterday, we are working with our local district attorney's office and they will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and hopefully we can make an example of that person. Um, and as far as the investigation itself, all I'm gonna comment on is the fact that this is an ongoing investigation. Um, and that's all I have to say at this time. Uh, turn it over to the college president. Thanks. Good morning. First of all, I want to thank all of you um, in the media for your uh, support uh, yesterday and today. I would like to ask um, respectfully if you could respect um, our students' privacy. Um, they have been through an ordeal and we're really trying to help them. Um, through through this ordeal and in talking to our law enforcement partners, talking to our students at this point uh, may actually hinder um, the uh, the investigation. So we we ask you um, to consider that, please. We know now. Um, I've hugged a few of them over the last 24 hours, uh, and their hugs say more than words possibly could. I am proud of them uh, for how uh, they are holding up. They're holding up remarkably well. There's so much gratitude um, to the faculty and staff and students for responding, how they responded to yesterday's lockdown, and the way they genuinely showed care uh, for one another. We're really proud of that. Um, we have an emergency response plan in place, and yesterday that plan worked. It was executed, uh, and I believe fairly well. We also owe a large debt of gratitude, um, as the chief said, to law enforcement personnel at the height of the situation, there were more than 100 police officers um, on this campus, uh, members of the UPD, state police, the FBI, Homeland Security. Um, so we thank them very much uh, for being here and for their presence and help. And the police presence is going to continue here at Utica College throughout the day. Um, in an effort to deter future threats, um, the officers as well as crisis professionals that we talked to who have been through similar circumstances encouraged us to resume normal operations today. Um, it, with that advice in mind and after considering many different perspectives, we made the decision to hold classes, um, but we also asked faculty um, not to hold the students um, responsible if they felt they couldn't come, and to also hold off on having um, exams, uh, quizzes, or any graded activities scheduled for today. Um, we've also encouraged our faculty and our students um, to devote time today to talk about um, what happened and to voice their concerns and, and reactions. Um, and we, we know that faculty will reach out to individual students who show evidence of, of needing emotional support. We have made counseling services available for our students and employees, um, so that work is underway. And as with every emergency here, it's our standing operating procedure to critique our response, which we plan to do um, in the next day or so. So we'll look very closely at um, our emergency management plan and I expect we'll find areas where we need to improve and we will make sure that those improvements happen. Thank you. Questions? So nobody's been arrested. Is up down now. So you have a specific suspect you're looking for and you're working with the district attorney to determine 
if an arrest is necessary, if there will be charges? Yeah, I, I just don't want to comment further on the investigation. But I guess we need to clear up a lot because last we know there were credible threats to the campus. We saw what happened yesterday. It was locked down for several hours. What can you tell people about what unfolded? Last we know there was a credible threat. Well, as far as a credible threat, credible means it was just carried out and, it, and that what didn't happen. Uh, typically, in an active shooter situation, uh, the shooter uses the element of surprise. They don't call on the threat. So as far as I'm concerned, this was not a credible threat. However, it was treated as such uh, and was fully investigated. So this past November, um, you were here holding an active shooter simulation. Uh, do you feel as though that prepared you for yesterday, even though it wasn't an active shooter situation? It was a great, it's a great question. Uh, back in November and, and October, we held uh, several sessions with both faculty and students, talk about what you do in an active shooter situation. And that was followed up in early January with an actual drill. And despite the fact that a lot of resources were spent on this threat that was not credible, in the end, um, it did um, assess uh, you know, our drill that we did earlier. And I can tell you this much from talking to the deputy chief who ran the operation, that uh, having done that exercise and the training beforehand, it made for a more coordinated response and, and also great communication between us and the college. And um, you know, we're, we're glad we did it. Why was Strubble Hall chosen as a place to evacuate the students? I don't know. And part of our investigation, that's what we're going to try to find out. So you don't want to say if you've identified a suspect? I don't even want to talk about a suspect at this point. OK. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what the investigation looks like today, day after? Like what's happening? Interviewing yeah. people, witnesses? Yeah, the only thing is I don't want to talk about the investigation itself because I don't want to tip off any possible suspect about what we're doing. So all I'm going to say is that the investigation is ongoing, and we hope to identify the suspect earlier right on then later. Did you say yesterday exactly what was said and whether this was one phone call or more than one or like how it came in? It was uh, several phone calls that came in. How many? Several. To whom and from whom? From the same source? To the same source? It appeared to be the same person making the, uh, the phone calls. To the college administration, to fellow students? Again, it's part of the investigation. I just don't want to go in depth. I don't re want to reveal publicly what we know uh, to a possible suspect out there when this is still ongoing. Well, can you say what they said exactly? Um, you know, yesterday, Jolene, I, I had a, a minor procedure being done. I did get an update in the briefing this morning about what happened. I don't have the exact words of what was being uh, said. Um, and I don't want to repeat something wrong, so uh, I, I'm not going to say what the threats were. Was there anything on campus to indicate that a threat was possible or uh, any kind of weapons, anything that w would make this threat a po possible? Again, any threats that come in, we treat them all as serious uh, potential threats that uh, may be legitimate. Uh, uh, there was a person saying that uh, they had, had a gun, and I'm saying this in a general sense, and it was at a specific place in Yucca College. And from that, there was a series of other phone calls that came in, each that were followed up. And, uh, and to the credit of the college, they took immediate action. Law enforcement took immediate action. And collectively, uh, you know, working together, uh, we were able to eventually flesh out the fact that it was not a, an actual shooter. This is not a credible incident. And, uh, and um, you know, thank God we weren't dealing with the tragedy. How soon after the initial threat were you able to identify that it wasn't credible? You know, right up to, uh, I, I, this, the search, from my understanding, took a, a approximately five to six hours. So until every square inch of this place was searched, uh, we weren't safe in saying that the place was secured. If any of the students are evacuated from particular areas into one larger location, is there what insurance is there are steps that are taken to make sure that whoever this person may or may not be isn't quietly blending in with that group to get into the larger group and then act on whatever the threat would be? Uh, I will say that the emergency operation plans were followed yesterday, as the college president spoke about yesterday. And uh, from a law enforcement perspective, each person coming in is checked. What kind of drain on resources does something like this do to a police agency? Because it's a lot of taxpayer money spent, but you wouldn't not spend it. You'd want this to be investigated to the fullest extent. 
But at the end of it, if you know, no one's held accountable, that's yet to be determined. That's a huge drain on, on your budget, the city's budget. Well, but but in, in all reality, and, and let me just stop in as, as the mayor, this is what we provide to the taxpayers is our service. And there's the unknowns that are out there. But to provide the services to the people so they're safe, whether it be Utica College or the city of Utica, when you put it, a budget together, it, it's an estimate. And sometimes your estimates are on, on, on course, and sometimes they're not. But you don't look at a budget to determine how you're going to investigate a, a situation of this magnitude, nor would anybody should ever look at it that way. It's, this is not dollars and cents. These are lives. I like to wrap this up because we have other work to do. If uh, I take a couple more questions uh, for either me or the college president. Um, as you review uh, your procedures that you followed yesterday, is there going to be any? Are you going to address social media use or text use um, while people are being evacuated? Um, there was a lot of back and forth um, from students to parents, you know, letting people know where they were and everything. Right. I don't know if we can completely control that. I will tell you this much. Uh, I, I've spoken to the college president. It is our intent in the very near future to have a debriefing about overall how things went, uh, both positive and ways we can improve. Uh, overall, right now, um, I'm happy with the response that we saw yesterday. I think that drill that we did earlier went a long way to making it uh, um, you know, as, um, as well as it could possibly go yesterday. So. Do you have any sense that in the future that for students and parents to yeah, I can. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So, so not only is there going to be a debrief with law enforcement, we're going to do an internal debrief at, at the college, and, and we will talk about what additional training needs to happen, you know, what were the things that went really well, what were the things that didn't go well, you know, gather people's input, and then, and then make decisions about how we can improve going forward. So, yes, that will definitely happen. And Laura, what would you say to students about the misinformation the room about trusting sources and tr trusting, repeating things that you might be seeing but maybe not understanding what it is or isn't? And could you step onto the mic, please? I'm sorry. So, um, with what the chief said, you know, it's pretty hard to control social media use, right? So we can talk to students about best practices and things that would be helpful, but there's no, you know, those things spread, you know, fairly quickly and they kind of have to take on a life of their own. So we will talk to them, but students will do you know what students do and, and parents want them to communicate you know there's just this frenzy um, that that happens so we can talk about best practices but then students will do what they what they're going to do and can you talk about today like are you still getting communications from students and or parents sure about yeah so so here? so we're trying to get back to every one that that has um, contacted us if anyone emails me I'm trying to um, I will make sure that I get back to them um, as you can imagine um, we were inundated um, with calls and emails and we want to make sure that everyone gets a response we started responding and we'll we'll continue to do so I mean I'm a parent myself right I I, I get this I mean I, um, you know yesterday was a traumatic event it was traumatic for everyone all the way around and we really want to be uh, be a resource uh, for people because our number one priority is the safety of of this campus. And unfortunately, right now we live in a world where colleges and universities and high schools there's another lockdown today in the in the area. I mean, this is a new reality that we have to deal with um, as a as a not just a campus but as a world. And so, Utica College got faced with that reality head on yesterday, and we're trying to do the best that we absolutely can. And there is still police presence today. Yes, yes, and there will be throughout the day. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you.